Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. To use a saying that's invoked a little too liberally, everything old is new again. So five years ago, I reviewed Savage Kingdoms, a sword and sorcery RPG that I stumbled across purely by accident in my many, many delves into the trenches. Now at the time, I felt it did a decent job of being low fantasy, barring a few fantastical elements that felt a little too on the traditional fantasy end of things. Fast forward a few years later, and not only did that game get an expanded setting, but a new edition, and now a third edition. You may ask, why cover this new third edition? Why didn't I cover its second? Well, besides the fact that I wanted to pay things forward after its creator was so willing to extend that kindness to me, full disclosure, I did back it on Indiegogo, I wanted to see for myself if the third edition was going to expand the sandbox in a familiar yet different way. This is also why I didn't review its second edition, as it's by all accounts more of a director's cut than a new edition, combining the base game with the Savage East expansion. Besides, when I initially did that review, I was still using my old format of chapter by chapter with a numerical score. Obviously, that will not be the case here. So, how does this return to an old gem hold up? Let's find out. If I could describe the general feel I get from 3rd edition, it would be cold, icy, that kind of thing. It's an interesting twist for this style of fantasy that tends to lean towards warmer climates and environments, or even temperate ones, hence the term swords and sandals that gets used so often. Now this is a positive, the colors don't bleed into the text, and the use of art doesn't blend either. My only real issue is with the table of contents. Savage Kingdoms has the palladium problem to a degree where the page number in the table of contents and the actual page doesn't match. It's not as bad as Palladium, as it's only a page or so off, but it's still something I need to take note of. Character creation is rife with options, as it always has been, and we'll be delving into this with a gladiator named Carwin. The first is race or culture. This can range between the non-human races or the human cultures available. We'll be going with Carnian in this case, which grants us the cold-natured and wilderness affinity racial abilities. Cairnians are largely akin to the real-world Scots within Savage Kingdoms. In addition, being a Cairnian plays a part in our minimum and maximum attributes, our starting languages, in this case Cairnian and Berthian, a cultural item, a dirk in this case, as well as skill specialties, in our case climbing, resist cold, and greatsword. Lastly, I should note our choice of culture determines which talents and weaknesses are favored by that culture. This means the talents listed cost one less point, and the weaknesses listed grant one more point. Second is Calling, the equivalent to Character Class, or more accurately, an Archetype. Now, in our case, we'll go with Gladiator. This grants us a pool of favored talents and weaknesses, as well as our starting skill pools and equipment. Again, more on that later. Third is Attributes. While the starting ranges of attributes is based on the culture chosen, the total attribute spread must equal 3. In our case, we'll go with Agility minus 1, Physique 2, Vigor 3, Intellect 0, Magnetism minus 2, and Willpower 1. This also plays into a derived traits. So we have Health 18, Stamina 16, Initiative 0, Luck 5, Mobility 11, and Renown 1. A fourth is Talents, the equivalent of feats in Savage Kingdoms. We have 10 points to spend on talents, with individual talents having varying costs. In our case, we'll go with Mercenary, Crippling Attack, Pressing Attack, Battle Mage, and Grit. Now, fifth is Weaknesses, which can grant extra points to be spent on either talents or skills. In our case, we'll go with Oathbound and Illegitimate, granting 5 points total. Sixth is Skill Points. We start with a number of skill points based on our calling, as well as a spread of skills for free. In our case, we'll go with Acrobatics 2, Athletics 3, Brawling 1, Endurance 4, Performance 1, Melee 6, Fire Arts 3, Perception 3, Resolve 3, and Herbalism 2. Lastly, Equipment. This is largely determined by a renowned rating, calling, and cultural item. 
In our case, we'll go with a pair of boots, a war skirt, a tunic, girdle, cloak, hard leather armor, a buckler, a spear, a dagger, and ten silver. I am well aware that I made several gaffes in terms of limitations and prerequisites in this setup, and I'm leaving these in to make a point. The creation process is rife with asterisks and caveats, and this is going to involve a lot of book jumping, especially given the fact that the favored talents and weaknesses are quite the list. That said, I wholeheartedly approve of the inclusion of callings within the game, as it helps mitigate the choice paralysis a bit, but I'm not sure if it mitigates it enough. This is a case where I feel the book seriously needs a summary page on character creation and some column on advanced characters, especially something to make sure that people have a general idea about how much things are going to cost. There's a lot that can be done with Savage Kingdom's creation system, but I'll likely need to make a few spreadsheets first, and a fillable sheet. Savage Kingdoms uses a d20 system, modified by attribute and or skill, and then compared to a target number ranging from 5 to 35. Now, unlike the familiar d20 system, natural 20s don't automatically succeed, they create exploding results. And critical successes activates on total of 20 or higher over the skill difficulty. Savage Kingdoms' extra effort system takes the form of luck, which can be expended on rerolls to add a 5 to a result, reduce damage by 5, gain an additional action, or save an item from being broken. Combat still works on an action economy as it had in the past, where each action takes a certain number of action points, usually one or two, instead of doing an action hierarchy. Now in combat, contested rolls are the name of the game, where the difference between attack and defense determines damage, with weapons and other effects determining the damage cap for that effect. That said, there's a lot of moving parts with the potential actions and tactics available. And while I'm not as high on the idea of a wound system as I was originally, I do think that a GM screen and a potential reference page is needed for this book. It's not overly complicated, but there's the potential for choice paralysis and not using all of what's available, especially when it comes to additional actions granted by talents. Beyond that, most of the mechanics have remained largely unchanged, just better clarified with time. I could go into each and every minor tweak, but that's beyond my scope. That's also the reason why I'm not delving deeply into how magic works, as it's deeply rooted to the talent system the game has. Also, it still uses stamina as fuel. Savage Kingdoms gives me a very inside feel. That is to say, it's akin to seeing the notes of a game that a certain table has run for years amongst themselves. And while that's nice, it does lead to some issues when it comes to looking at it from the outside in. The word that keeps screaming at me is navigation, both in terms of bookmarks and in terms of how things are organized. The appendices at the end are nice insofar as talents are concerned, but I think that a few more summaries could help put things over the top. In addition, I can't help but wonder if the book would have been better served by a creature creation chapter, given the rogues gallery is a bit too small for what's here. All that said, Savage Kingdom's 3rd edition gets a stamp of playable. If you get it with the Savage Bestiary, I'm willing to bump that to recommended, but there's going to be a bit of legwork when it comes to having certain rules and mechanics in an easy-to-reach place. Something that I learned in usability is that people want to have the info they're looking for now, and any delays don't help. I'm not completely slagging the book, though. There's a stronger presence towards the grit it's aiming for compared to what I saw five years ago. I just think this version could use another pass in editing. At the end of the day, I critique because I care. I want to see everyone get better.